I want to, to just play a little bit today with not the, the, the full, all the details out. Um, I don't think we can do a full detail Nile the crocodile on toned paper. However, let's check out some crocodile action um, because the ideas from, but you, know, you, you might be thinking, but I'm not sketching in a place where there are crocodiles near here. So why do I need to do this? Well, I'm glad you asked. I can give you two really good reasons. Number one, because Ray Bonto wants to find out how to draw an owl crocodile. We'll hook you up. Number two is that the principles and ideas that you're going to get from drawing a Nile crocodile can go into a whole bunch of other places. We're going to use this Nile crocodile as kind of a platform for thinking about drawing processes in general. And so I am going to. So here we are. I'm going to close that out. I am going to. Um, so, um, Ivea, are you looking at um, a Google page and a and a little sketchbook? Yes. Oh, good, good, good. I feel very pleased. All right. So first, I want to. Um, what I've done is I've just gone uh, Nile crocodile. I did a Google image search. So you go to Google Images, and to um, I want to get ones that. Um, can grow larger. So um, under settings, uh, or sorry, under tools um, in a Google search, what I usually do is I go to tools and I just select ones that are large. And that means that when I um, zoom on those, um, they will, they'll be large. And I'm looking initially for some sketches of a crocodile kind of from a distant view. And so this one will do. Um, I'm looking for kind of a three quarter view of this. And here it comes. Wow, technology is amazing. So let's take a look at this little beastie here. Um, I have, um, Let's take a look at the tail here. So here's the tail. There is, you see there's this scaly bar going up the middle of the tail, sort of this row of scales, and then it splits into these two wings that go along the sides. And then you follow those wings up, they get wider, and then you get two more ridges inside those. But we're gonna take this outside one and we're gonna follow it doo -doo 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 all the way over here. And the other one is there kind of disappearing around the side. So what I want you to do is to think of just sort of the shape, the geometric shape of this thing as kind of going up the side here, over the top flat, um, and then back down the other side. Over here on the side of the tail, we're going to curve up, then go across this flat top, and then drop down the other side. Over here in the middle of the belly, we're going to go around. It's sort of more of a big barrel shape here. Um, and the roof, instead of being flat, is a domed roof, arched roof over here. Let's block in this, this shape. So what I'm going to do is, I am going to draw in the shape of this crocodile. Here's, here's the approach that I'm going to do. First, let's look along. I'm going to go back to, I'm going to go back over to the crocodile there and look along the back here. See this line? We're coming along flat here, horizontal. We're curving down and look at the shape of this curve here, right? Just here along the top. See that curve there? What I want you to do is just bring your finger up and trace this line on your screen a couple of times. Right here where I'm drawing. Trace that curve on your screen. You feel that? Right. Then feel that kind of come up on your screen to that flat. So what I'm going to do 
is I have something that kind of curves roughly like that on my screen. Now, um, I want to think of, um, so if that might be sort of one side of that curve, my tail here kind of comes up and then it's gonna split into two. Now, right here, I'm seeing the width of, of, of this, of the, the back of the crocodile here. Um, out here, if I kind of look across the back, sort of following the direction that, oh, here's, here's this, this, is, this is gonna be good, check this out. Look at the direction that this crack between the scales goes. See that? Now, take a look here, and you see how these are kind of coming up at angle. So this is going flat. As we kind of get up here, we're kind of coming in at a, at a steeper angle. Here, we're coming in very steeply down like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think of on this that out here, there are, these might be some kind of guidelines about the back other side of, of, this, of this curve. Here's one side of my crocodile. My other side is gonna come down here. It's gonna come around the same corner and it's gonna join this one here and off like that. Now the back of my, oh, actually let's, let's, let me, let's put in some of the, the side of this tail. So the side of the tail is coming straight down, maybe out slightly, and it's disappearing in the water, but it's roughly doing something like, like that. So what I'm doing is I'm thinking of this as, as a three-dimensional shape that is cutting across here, down here like this, Behind our vision, it would be doing this. So I'm thinking of this as a three-dimensional shape here. Right, and over here on this side, this shape would be doing something like that. Actually, it's thicker. Now, my croc body, uh, my leg is going to be in here, a big sort of mass of its upper leg. And then I'm going to have my body section up here. So I want to get this part here to be, this body section to be about the right proportions. So I'm gonna have a thick, body in here, sort of an arched roof. And there's no scale that goes around the side here, but I'm gonna put in some of these contour lines just to help my brain still kind of think of this as this big rounded shape. That's going to then that big body section has a leg that is going to attach in here. And there's a little cylinder of a neck that sticks out from that. Finally, let's scoot croc this way. There is a head that is going to come comes out flat. Now, we're all going to have a tendency to draw this head much bigger than it is on the real crocodile because 
<clears throat> because the crocodile's head is such like the big business end of the crocodile, it really gets our attention. There's a tendency like you're going to make what your brain is attracted to too big on your page. So just show of hands how many people made a croc head that was a little bit too large. Check these out. Anybody? A few of us. So I'm going to take a look at mine. So is that head too big? Uh, going back here. You know, maybe another head. Maybe I can handle that croc head size. All right. Um, now I'm going to just block in the leg. I think of the leg here as a tube coming down. And that's attaching to another tube coming down here. So it's useful for me. If I just draw this as you know a line here and a line here, and I'm not thinking of that as, as a cylinder, later on when I am drawing this, it's going to be easy for me for this drawing to look really flat. But if I can take advantage of any time I can I can to sort of think three-dimensionally about this drawing, I want to I want to take advantage of that. So back here on this back leg, there's going to be a big bump that is sticking up here. And that's coming to a little tube section that comes down. And then there's going to be some crock foot sticking in there. And I want to think of this thing that is coming down here as, as a three dimensional form. Once I've got that, make this croc a little bit smaller. There we go. Um, I want to just look back and forth at this croc and my croc, this croc and my croc, and say, where am I? Uh, where is my croc off? All right. Um, and you know, can I find any places where there's sort of major proportions or things that are are, are feeling weird. Um, for instance, the real croc, it's a little bit longer in here. Then mine is shorter on that belly section. So you see that, you see how my sketch here, this section of my sketch is shorter than the proportions on the other croc. And also interestingly enough, this portion out here is feeling a little bit too long. So what if I just move this leg forward a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this leg and bring it out here. And I like that better. So you see the advantage of me looking around my drawing for things that I can fix at this early stage is look at how easy it was for me to move that crock leg. If I waited later on in the drawing and had some detail in here, it'd be impossible to move my crock leg. But because I looked around, especially with the framing of knowing that for me, I tend to make, like the, I tend to make my head too big and non-action parts of the body, like the length of the body here, like the tail's cool, the head's cool, and so I neglect my body. Um, so I want to just sort of notice the general proportions of what I'm doing. I once saw a guide to drawing, and it had people blocking in stuff, and then they drew in all their details, and as one of the last steps, in the drawing, after all the detail is complete, it said, check your proportions. Um, the only reason you'd want to check your proportions at that point is just to make yourself feel bad. Because <laughs> there's nothing you can do about it. But if you check your proportions at the start of a drawing, then you're able to fix those sorts of things. 
Let's make this a little bit more crocky. Um, so other details of crockness on this is that in this area here, um, there's going to be a wing kind of going out of little scales. And I'm going to have the same thing in this area here. But for most of this, it is going to be pointing towards me. And um, so I'm not going to see the scales in this part as being as, as big as on the other side. So I've just got, I'm going to have large wing on this side. This side here is foreshortened because it's pointing towards me. And then there's this cool, really, really cool um, zone as you kind of come down the tail here. Um, I have to make that tail shorter. Um, that has those large, that kind of peel of scales on it. Let's see here. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah. Um, so I've got this height coming in here. This zone here, I'm going to make peels. Just trying to figure out how much of this to make the peel. So this. Um, if this crock were sitting like this. Now this crock is sitting partially in the water, partly on the beach. So um, we are seeing this area here uh, covered up by water and the edge of your beach. I actually see less this, but this one, I know that that body would continue down underneath the water there, doing something like that. Those lines on the back. Let's take a look, go back to that croc picture. Um, notice that there's two lines here between the major scales. I'm going to follow this one up. It comes up here. And now there is, ooh, there's another row that is sticking in between this one and the outside one. But that this one that is coming up here actually traces up there on the back of this. So I want this line that is coming along as we're going to have here. We're going to come up the back of this. We're going to get another line of scales that comes in here. We'll place a few features. There's an eye. I want to get my eye in the right place, eye close to the top, somewhere in there. And the shape of this mouth, let's look at that. <clears throat> so for this croc smile, there's one bump, one curve here, second curve here, and then a little curve around the front. Right? So one, two of about equal size, and then small in the front. Let's take a look from the back corner of the mouth here and notice where it starts. It's all the way down here behind the eye. And it's about halfway down the head. So, um, so I'm going to go about halfway down the head, one bump, two bumps, and then round in there. So on my little crop here, there's my eye. And I'm going to start my mouth somewhere up in there with one bump, two bumps, and then 
a little curve around. So I like to um, lay out a lot of the drawing before putting in details. So I get, like to kind of figure out like where the lines of the mouth go, these sorts of uh, features. That's going to help me later on when I want to, um, to, to be able to draw details. If I've already figured out where my details go, then I can concentrate on that instead of thinking about. Um, I, I, can, I can. I'm sorry. I can, if I already figure out where a detail, I figure out where my eye goes. Then when I go into draw my eye, it's going to be a lot easier for me. I can just focus on drawing the eye instead of also thinking about where the eye goes in that head. So that's that's a lot of kind of preliminary drawing and blocking in the basic the base the basics of this crop. If I get in here now, and I, I could get in here and just sort of start going scale by scale. Um, and that's going to take a long time. But I'm going to approach this with a little bit more of a field sketch. And over this framework, um, I am going to be giving you a lot of lines that are going to quickly give you a sense of the kind of detail that I'm seeing on this crocodile. But I'm not going to be doing a scale by scale thing. If I were doing a scientific illustration, my approach would be very different. If I were doing a scientific illustration, I would count the scale rows. I would then on my drawing carefully map those out. And I'd have the right number of scales going up the belly, the right number of scales going down. I would be, you know, like I, you could kind of triangulate, like there's that scale and there's that scale on the drawing. So that takes a lot of time and isn't really practical in the field. But I can get a sense of this um, pattern really quickly with more sketchy lines. And doing that on top of a structure that is already worked out is going to be a lot easier. So let's think about the um, scale patterns on the back of our friend here in terms of different zones of scale. So let's take a look again at the croc here. And I want you to, if sort of in your head, come up with different um, scale zones, different scale zones different textures of scales in different areas. And what are you going to have? Your the zones that you make up may be a little bit different than the ones that I make up. Um, but <clears throat> that's OK. We're, but we're all going to be just sort of looking at the same kind of reference. And let's try this. So for me, um, one is there's the whole back zone. So I get this sort of this, I imagine this, this back part with these ridges as, as a flat zone. And then that kind of comes back into here. The lower tail, I have these zones of big vertical scales. The verticals are prominent, horizontal breaks between them less prominent, but very big scales. Um, I like this sawtooth on the back here. Um, the side of its body, is a little bit more variable than out here on the tail. The scales are smaller. Small leg scales on the legs here. And look on the front. Notice the way that they're in rows kind of arcing around here. I don't really get that feeling as much from the back leg. And finally, a zone of small scales here on this tissue cut, tucking up here underneath the throat. So. I'm now going to try to quickly give an impression of this on my, on my sketch. Um, let me start with blocking in some, uh, some, some, some major areas, and then we'll kind of drop some details in on top of those. 
I've got a ballpoint pen here. I'm using a Bic Atlantis pen, which is my current favorite um, uh, uh, ballpoint pen. All right, where to start? Because I've got this framed out, I can start anywhere, but I think I'm gonna start on the head. I'll do the head a little bit later. The reason is I just need to warm up my drawing a little bit. So if I start on one of the critical areas, like the head or this cool tail zone, um, when my brain isn't fully warmed up, that's gonna be more challenging, more difficult for me. So I'm gonna start with an area that's kind of less, sort of a high percentage area. So, to, so not the face, not this cool tail. I'm gonna start back here just with this back leg and then sort of build out from there. All right, so I'm seeing that, you know, roughly there is a, um, a leg that is coming around here. I've got um, and so there's then all of these little lines. I'm putting in sort of a patch of scales there and then there's going to be another patch down here. I don't have to worry about kind of making all these kind of fit into each other. This sort of, you know, roughly I've got this little zone down here. Roughly I've got these things up here kind of doing something like this. Um, uh, let's see, there's... All right. And now I'm gonna do this front leg. Again, I'm starting with some areas that are just, I'm using these as kind of my, my sacrificial pancakes um, to help me kind of just get, get started, getting going. I like these kind of big scale rows coming around the corner here. And now I'm going to kind of slow down and kind of get out here into some of these fingers, All right? Here's a, here's a little, here's a little crocodile finger right here. All right. So just a little bit of slowing down in there. Um, On this edge here, I punched in a little bit of a heavier line. Pop that out. And now I'm feeling more bold. I'm feeling a little bit more warmed up with my pen. I'm gonna take over this little area here, tucking under the throat. Um, and I want this to feel like it's skin that is kind of coming down and hooking underneath here. I want it to look droopy, so I'm kind of getting this little kind of a hook in it. And it is roughly, there's a bunch of rows of things in there, but then it's, under the throat, Don't have to get in there and draw in every little bump. And that just sort of suggests a little bit of that kind of different warty texture. I'm going to do the side of the body here. Notice I'm starting with just, again, with areas that are just a little bit easier for me to do. <clears throat> how, uh, how, is the, these, these, how are these scale rows slung? They're kind of coming out and then down, and then they're kind of tucking back in. Out, down, tucking back in. And up in here, they're kind of coming down and coming back. So a, a few little lines like that are going to help me to sort of keep myself in. 
And let's see, they're sort of in. I'm not getting in here and counting every row. A few places. Maybe around here too. suggesting that there's a different kind of scaling. And then a few places I'm going to emphasize um, some of these cracks between masses of scales. So I'm going to draw, come in here, see where my plus is on the Nile crocodile picture, my little uh, magnifying glass. I'm going to kind of come in here. I'm going to show some of these, just emphasize the shapes of some of these cracks right in here. I'm going to do the same right up in here, put in just a few little crack edges. Emphasize some of those. Just kind of come in and pop in some of those cracks a little bit more. Not they're focusing on the 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 shape of the scale, but the shape of some of the cracks between those scales. Now, I've been saving this part out here in the head for sort of later in the, the, the illustration when I'm kind of getting my, my, my feet on the ground more. Now I had a chance to do a little bit more drawing. So I think I'm going to be okay with, with playing with that. So I'm going to kind of come here. I'm going to make a little bump bump motion here. My pen. And notice that in here, I, I let in some gaps here. So on my little edge here, there'll be some places where my edge of my crocodile is going to be a nice clear line. Other places where my line, I'm going to go for a bit of a sketchier line, a lighter line that you're going to be able to see through. Now here is where these scales are starting to come up towards you. And on the other side, And then we get to where they join, and we're going to have this big ridge of scales going down. That's cool.
as we come out here, this, these are the lines that get closer together. Now, what about in here? Between this little scale row there, let's actually zoom down on this a second. So again, zoom down. Oh, you're not wanting to zoom, I am. Ah, what if we do this? There you go. All right. So this area in here, I want this area to read as a flat surface that is going around and turning. And those 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 lines across those scale rows are going to be very helpful. So I'm going to draw in one out here. And then I want to think of as we kind of come back this way, we are starting to turn the direction of those a little bit. And similarly, as we're going up this way, I'm going to start to get some of these lines that are going to be tilting up in this direction as you go up in different areas. So you see how that direction changes. The analogy, so I have to pull out, where's my analogy hiding? Uh oh. Ah. This is what we've got going on. So this is a slinky that is curved around here. So you're seeing Look at the direction of the ridges of the slinky as it goes around. You see how those change? Right here in the middle, they're over the top, they're going straight across. Up in here in this end, they're coming up. And on the bottom part down here, they're coming down towards you. So I want to get that curving slinky action going on along it. So let's see, in this area here, I'm going to That, that area ends up being really important in helping this sort of read as curving around there. Those lines are coming across and then they cut down here on the side. So these lines that are coming down here on my crock are helping you then sort of see like, oh, there's a surface that is up here and it's oriented like that. And then you're turning and going, there's a different surface. There's a plane that is coming down here on the side. When you get right up here into this corner, what angle are they gonna be going at? It's confusing, hard to tell, right? There, I know how to make these lines coming down. Right up in here, it's more confusing. Notice that I'm not putting them in there. And let's look at the crop picture. It's, you look at that and it's, Harder to see just like what is kind of right in here, which way is that? Uh, am I seeing a change in that line? Hard to tell. So I'm just leaving that kind of confusing place out um, and it's still gonna read. Now, I want some ridges going up the back of my crocky friend. Ridge coming up here. This ridge is going to go and tip drift off the side. This ridge 
you think it's going to stay close here, but look, it's going. Whoop. This one here on the side comes up to about here and forks. We're seeing those two just behind the shoulder, so we don't want to get them much further than that. <clears throat> Let now, um, let's go into the head. Now I am going to go for that eye. Um, so what I want to sort of simplify is that I have, there's a ball of an eye in there. And there is an area of hard skin and eyelid that comes over that. On the back end, and it goes out into a little seam, and then there's a there's a kind of a big eyelid down below that. So that simplified down there. So I'm going to emphasize this a little ridge over the top, seen in the back, and with a little bit of an eyelid. There's a big bump back behind the eye. And notice so here, when I'm drawing the big bump on top, and watch what I do on the lower edge of it. This is kind of a cool little trick. I'm going to just make a series of little lines like this. And that is sort of suggesting that, oh, look, there's this, there's this thing that is coming up and the edges, here's this wrinkle and here's the bottom edge of it. It's not going to make a hard line, but I can make these little lines across it. And you could get a sense of the edge of that, that line. So here's another big scute on the back. Oh, it looks so skewed. Come on. Now this one here, I drew the top edge and the bottom edge of it. I like this effect better here where I draw the top edge and the bottom edge. I'm just putting a few of those little lines in to sort of say that's the bottom edge of it. I think that looks better than this one here. So I did the top and the bottom edge of this one with the line. I like this effect better. So that's what I'm going to do for those other ones in the back. All right, um, so I'm going to start my mouth back in here. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I can, I'm going to lightly have my line is going to follow this. But what I want to do is because there are these little kind of gaps, you see how that, that mouth just, you see those little dark triangles all along there, little grooves for teeth. If I hit this with a really smooth line, it's going to give me a very different texture. 
So I'm going to make this little kind of hit go hit line where I'm making this with First time I went to Tanzania, um, we were camped along the side of the Gromedi River. And after a long day in a vehicle, I was really glad to get out and stretch my legs and make my way down to the, the river there. The Gromedi River was flowing peacefully by. And I sat down by the bank to do a little sketch without the kind of situational awareness that somebody who has grown up um, in, in Tanzania might have. Um, oh, here on the bottom edge of this jaw, I'm gonna, instead of doing that first sort of a big hard line, I'm going to suggest kind of a curve in with some of these lines here. Um, so I sat down to sketch, and there are these, uh, the, you know, a beautiful muddy river flowing by, uh, and there were logs on the other bank that I put them in my sketch. Um, and uh, later on, when I looked up, um, I uh, I noticed that the logs weren't there anymore. And somehow I got this low brainstem, um, you might want to move message. <laughs> and, and I jumped up and I ran away from the edge of the, and my, my, my sketching supplies were still there down there by the bank. And I looked out and in the water, there were all of these little crocodile eyes. So what the regular crocodile thing to do is you can go up in the muddy water all the way to the edge of the bank and then jump up, grab whatever is there and pull it back in, drown it, then do the spin and shear Things, you know, you twist your food off and you have a great time. That would have been a uh, unfortunate end to a nature journaling career uh, right there by the side of the Grometi River. Um, but it's just so interesting to be, you know, I've, I've grown up in a habitat where I'm essentially top predator and you can plop yourself, oh, look, there's a pretty river. Let's go sit by the river, All right? Um, just fascinating to be in a place with different rules. Okay. Um, so there's a little head on my crop. And now I'm just going to put in, I have a little bit more fun um, to kind of wrap this up um, with a Tombow pen. And uh, what I want to do is notice where the light and shadows are. So. Take a look here in this well by the tail, shadow zone in there, shadow coming underneath here on the leg, underneath here on the leg. Squint at this picture and you can see a little highlight in here where my uh, pointer is. Um, highlight up in here. Um, we're getting some shadow zone here along the side of the croc, darker down in here. Shadow goes all the way on there. Um, up in here, shadow more focusing on the underside here and on the underside of the head. Um, so what I'm going to do is get my little Tombow pen, Tombow brush pen. So these are cool little brush pens. This is a N75. It has a brush on one side. It has a little fine drawing tool on the other. I'm going to be mostly using the brush. And with a few strokes, I'm just going to block in major zones of, um, of shadow. So let's start right in here, look over the top of this tail, and you see that there is there's shadow that is coming in there, all the way on the undersides of those, and it's tucking right down into there. 
I'm seeing some shadows along the sides of these scales here. Some shadows on these scales. Down here in front of the leg, somewhere in here, my shadow disappears. I'm going to put that down. that. I've got shadow that comes up here on the underside of this. I might want this shadow in here to be a little bit fainter, but I'm only working with one. Brush for my shadow right now. Shadow on the underside of the head. Glad I did not end up getting a full demonstration of crocodile feeding strategies. Now I can hang out with all you guys and draw them. Um, here on the leg. And lastly, on the tail here. The surface all in shadow. And look at this, and how the reflection is darker. Last thing I'm going to do is just go back with the Tombow pen. And if I give something a stroke once with the Tombow pen, it's a medium tone of gray. If I hit it a couple more times, I can punch in some of those darks. So same Tombow pen, I'm going to come in here and reinforce some of these shadows right in there. I'm going to reinforce some of this going on in here. A little bit under here. Um, I need to put this guy on the sand. So I'm going to put the, the shadow um, also on the sand. A little bit here underneath the body and going out under the head. Thank you. 
Final step, I might just come back in with my ballpoint pen or if I have um, a heavier marker handy, I can put in a little bit more line variation. So some, that little bit of heavier line pulls that tail in front of you. I'm good to go. So we started, remember, by blocking this crocodile in geometrically. We we looked at um, at, at at how to how do we how do we think about this as 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 a shape. We moved that leg earlier on, which gives the middle of the body longer shape. I waited in the drawing for some of the more critical areas, that head and this zone of the tail, just to give my brain a little bit more time to warm up. If you look at some areas of this, you know, these areas here, they're, they're, it's handled loosely. And, you know, if I wasn't pleased with the way that these first scales went on, it doesn't make as much of a difference now because everybody's going to look at the eye of the crocodile. And um, so there's two schools of thought and I bounce back and forth between each of them. So one school of thought is, is do the eye and the face first because if you can kind of get the thing looking back at you then it's really going to have that right feel. Yeah, that's true. And also sometimes it's useful to do that zone last because then you've had a chance to warm up. If you've been out sketching crocs all day, it's okay to start over there by the eye because by then you know, your, your, your eye, your hand are all warmed up. But um, if, you, um, if you instead um, are sort of starting out and you, you need to kind of a little bit of kind of warm up time, it's a great idea on a sketch to play with some kind of low percentage areas. Um, those areas where not everybody's eyes going to be immediately drawn to. So maybe work on that leaf over there before the heart of that central flower. We always start with the flower that is the coolest one right in the middle of the picture. But what if you started with that one off on the side? Then you've got that as warm up by the time you get to the other one. Well, I hope that these um, have been some useful strategies. Um, we've got our Nile crocodile friend here, and um, it, uh, there are a number of ideas here that are kind of broadly applicable to not just drawing a crocodile, but, but any organism that you're curious about. Um, let me, I'm going to escape here. Stop share. Hi. Um, I'm going to grab, so the, the approach which I, I, I showed you today, um, that was what I was doing um, over uh, the, the, the weekend, um, a, a few, uh, I got to go play at the zoo, and so just sort of show you some of these zoo sketches. And you'll see if it, it really is it's the same thing that I, the same basic techniques they were doing on the crocodile are also going on 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 these on these forms. Let's take a look and then we'll share some um, of your work. So here is uh, so this is is um, pen gorillas, and then that's the Tombow pen. This is the N75 um, that is just kind of coming in and adding a few areas of tone at the end.
So here I was, um, I was kind of blocking in uh, with my pen, sort of planes on the face. Similar approach to what I was doing with the kind of that, that crocodile body. Uh, this bear up here is the one that I think is probably the, the most similar to this technique. Let's zoom down on that bear. No, you won't. Well, let's do that. Okay. Um, where what I did is I I built a framework for this bear, and uh, which is essentially there was a barrel in here that I had sketched with this barrel of the neck coming into it. And then I put this plane of popped up this little uh, this hatch of the bump on top of the shoulder. Originally, um, there was uh, my my the the belly was down much further, and I moved it up a lot. I actually think on this sketch I could have moved it up even further. If you look at where that neck comes in, it's right there at that belly level. Um, so this one's neck, kind of in there. Maybe that belly wants to go up higher. Actually, I think what wants to happen is on this one, that, that neck wants to come down a little bit further. All right. Um, hey, that works. Um, so, but, but this, this um, basic sketch here, went through a few iterations and changes when it was just in the, uh, the purple pencil stage. And then I was, I was able to draw more deliberately on top of that. Oh, black bear. Um, and that, is fun with a Nile crocodile. But <clears throat> should you find yourself peacefully sitting by the banks of the um, Grameti River, I just want to remind everybody that a little bit of social distance from the edge of the water is advised. Um, you don't want to end up like the elephant's child, um, you know, playing tug of war with a, a, a crocodile, um, even if you have an insatiable curiosity. Thank you all. And, um, and, and thank you all so much for being here. The, in just a moment, we're going to be doing our group share. I want to um, also thank uh, Ivea again for helping support me um, in these, these, these workshops. It really does take uh, two of us to, to run these sorts of things. There's a lot that kind of goes on on the, the, the back end and um, that, that really supports it. Um, Ivea, I really appreciate your, for the community safety and also the content in the, the, the chats and what you add to it. Um, I'm really grateful for you helping me with every one of these workshops. So everybody give it up for Avea. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful to be working beside you. So I've always got your back and thank you for letting me be here with you. I'm so no. thankful for this. <laughs> I, I, I feel that you do have my back. I really appreciate that. Always. Um, so everybody out there, be safe, be kind. And, um, and, and create art. Let's go play in nature just with some social distance from the edge of the Grimetti. And uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm now going to remove my spotlight and we are going to jump to our gallery view. Um, folks, I have until um, 1.30. Um, and so, we're going to do uh, just kind of a, a quick round of shares, and then I'm going to have to jump off. And um, and uh, so let's um, I want let's 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 share as much as we can, and then 
let's, um, I'm going to start with Heidi. Um, Heidi, hey, good to see you. Oh, oh, we need to make you able to unmute yourself. Sorry, my bad. Um, you can now unmute yourself. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, but we we still can't hear you. There's a, a unmute button um, in the on your screen, perhaps. But we can see your crocodile. Um, that's really fun. It's nice to get to drop the colored pencils in on this. Um, and uh, in life, in the field, uh, crocodiles have these wonderful browns and greens uh, mixed in with them. Uh, when they don't want to be seen, they're not seen. They're such, such elegant primeval creatures. Uh, I'm afraid we, st we still can't, can't uh, we don't have any audio. Oh, um, I'm going to double check. Um, but thank you so much for sharing this. Um, I really appreciate it. It's so good to see you. Yeah, look at how those colored pencils just add a real, a real punch on on something like this. Um, let's let me um, see here. I'm going to jump to my gallery view, and um, Bill. Um, oh, there has been some, but looks like some botanical shenanigans happening here. Um, let's yeah, see what's that's right. Yeah, it's actually Sharon. I don't know why my husband's name came up, um, but we are here in Southeast Michigan undergoing what I always refer to as the plague of seeds because the um, American elm, the Siberian elm and the Norway maple are all producing massive amounts of seeds, which clog our gutters, um, germinate in our garden beds, <laughs> need to be swept off the patio. So this is our our current situation. <laughs> oh, that's that's really that's. But it's on on our end. It's fun, and we get to see uh, the results of it. I love how you are, you're really showing something that is, this is what is happening in this season and what is special about this in this place and time. Um, as you, and because she's made a collection here, so you're, you're seeing um, a really seasonally appropriate collection. And a, a collection is when you take a narrow topic and you try to find as many examples of that as you, as you can. Um, well, our, the next phase is when the cottonwoods <laughs> um, send their little parachute seeds all over um, the neighborhood and the edges of our lawns look as though snow has gathered there. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Thank you. <laughs> and well, and this will also, what, um, so uh, Sharon, what this, that what this really says to me is it just sort of shows a, again, you know, just how when you go out and you document what you see, That's... then it grounds our journal in place and time. So what you're seeing is you know, on this page is specific to just this time of year and your exact location. And so as far as, um, as, as a meditation moment, you are here and now um, with this journal page and um, Thank you so much for sharing that. <laughs> Want to encourage more folks out there to get yourself a little collection of whatever is happening in your neck of the woods um, right now. Um, let's see. Um, Walters, um, oh, what's been happening on your journal page? Yeah, so today uh, I was just uh the whole days were very busy and i didn't get a chance to go out and do any nature nature journaling but this uh today in the evening i went to the harbor wall and uh, i was like it's the fourth of may here and it's uh, like the independence day here so i was like oh i have to get the, something special for the independence day here in latvia so uh so 
I was walking on the harbor wall and suddenly I see this like kind of black thing which, which I thought was a rock. It was like sitting on top of a rock. And I was like, hmm, that doesn't look like I put my telescope up and it's a black guillemot. So the, those are very, very rare here. So it's such a cool bird to see. I only seen one before in Iceland. So it's such a cool bird and to, to get a chance to draw it, it was uh, very, very fun. I love also the, the view from the front um, with the, the, notice how Walters has put in the eye shapes here really looking at, we tend to just put in automatic circles for bird eyes. Sometimes they are, and sometimes they're not. Um, but through a spotting scope, you can kind of pick up those kinds of details. I also really like just that little kind of hint, hit of the little kind of wrinkle in um, the, the surface right around the eye. It really places those into the head. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it was, it was very interesting to see because these usually are, uh, like deep sea waters, they they're not like yeah. duck who stay close to the shore to feed on seaweed and other small critters on the seabed. So these follow the fish uh, around in the deep sea. So to see it so close to the shore is uh, uh, was uh, was wonderful, very wonderful. Great. Yeah, and I I put it uh, on the internet that I. I've seen it, and uh, everybody's going nuts. Right everybody's now, going so. nuts and heading out there. Everybody's going nuts. So uh. I, I called my friend. I called my friend who's an ornithologist, and he's doing a big year this year, and he hadn't seen this bird. And I was like, uh, <laughs> "Hey, you know what I got here? I have a I have black guillemot here." And he's like, "Oh shit, shoot! I'm not I'm not in town. I was planning on going tomorrow, like tomorrow, but I'm coming this evening." Okay. Is he still there? It was like crazy, heavy, very. Well, I'm I'm still an intense birder, so it was also uh, great to see this bird. That's really Such fun. Such amazing. Um, also, I like yeah. the way you've carefully observed the way that the the beak inserts into the head and where the yeah, well, feathers come to... onto the beak and where um, and, and and that interface is a really good thing for people to focus on. So notice in the initial sketch. Um, it's one way, and then he gets a closer, then we get a closer look, and we see this, this second view. That's really yeah. fun to see. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's still molting, so usually they're very black, but mm -hmm. in wintertime, since uh, it uh, has a long journey to Nor Norway and Iceland, so it's still changing, and this is what I see through a spotting scope. Oh! Oh, this is taken uh, with a phone through a spotting scope. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. Um, and if you ever get to look inside the mouth, if it ever yawns while you're there, you're going to freak out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm no spoilers here. No spoilers here. Okay. I'm just saying that should okay, you see I'm that. I'm going to go back tomorrow. Maybe okay. Still there. <laughs> that's great. Hey, thank you so much for sharing this. Thank you. Um, and uh, before I have to sign off, I want to jump over to Ray Bonto um, and see, you are the reason we did um, the, the, the crocodile today. And um, let's see what you've got. All right, uh, I have a lot to share, so I'll just flip through quickly. Uh, um, yeah. Yep, I, I get a sense of the planes on the body, the heaviness. Um, I also like the way you've kind of created that modeled surface with your watercolor application. You really get a sense for that, um, the, the blotchiness of this. And boy, you could fit inside one of these, couldn't you? <laughs> yeah, I usually have a V3 um, thing, uh, and a sketchbook because you don't have to worry about portability. And that's the great thing about having a practice book. Mm -hmm. So that's right. So Ray Bonto has a practice book before at home where you can have big paper. So you don't have to worry about portability when you're going out in the field. But then when you're just practicing and rehearsing things, you can, you can build that all up in the field. Let's see what else is going on here. Okay, oh, boy. Uh, here are pigeons. Then I went to some 
park and I thought there was a coot nest, so I sketched that. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. Let's pause on this coot. Let the camera focus. Yeah. Hi. You're, the way you are seeing light has really progressed. I'm seeing just the, the light reflecting on the water and you're just letting those, um, you're, you're putting in what you see, your values and the way you're seeing light in um, recent, in, in, in this page is, is also advancing and developing. So not only your understanding of the anatomy of these species, but um, you're seeing, you're observing light. This is, this is. Then I, um, okay. Uh, uh, then I, um, these dots, I saw uh, some a little heron in flight. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, it's a, that's a doctor duck. Um, and... No, that's in my I don't know. Oh, no, no. Is it okay for us to see the um, the the uh, the artichoke as well? Okay, fine. Yes. Um, oh, wait, wait, because so, so this is exactly what I was talking about with the light. You are seeing light. Yes, this this is. I'm 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 seeing just a whole new progression in your observation skills, the way that light falls across this. Look at that sort of change from left side of the artichoke to the right. Um, placements of highlights, dark values going in. Um, the, I, you know, you, you, you feel with the zucchini that you feel its dimension because of the careful um, placement of the, 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 the lights and darks on this. So really excited to see um, this this is, this is I, I feel like, a, a whole breakout area for you. We're seeing a new aspect of your um, development as, a, as an observer, Ray Bonto. That's exciting to see. And then yeah, this was a gray light goose and some cute babies at another park. Uh, those coot babies are outrageous with those little yellow hairs. Yeah. Than, did you have it in your spotting scope? Um, and so uh, then I, today I went out and when I came back, I saw a rainbow, so I took that in. That's great. And. Ah. <laughs> 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 Uh, on Saturday, it's a uh, Celestron five two 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 eight. If you want an angle, you can go for the five two 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 two. Yeah. And what's it like for you to uh, sketch through this? Yes, if only it was angled, that would finish it all. But um, everything else is it's great. It can go. It can zoom in from fifteen times to forty five times. Mm hmm. And it, uh, it can focus to uh, the closest focusing point is 19 feet. That's great. That's great. Oh, this is this is exciting. This is going to open up some really interesting doors. Yeah. Really okay. interesting doors. Jack, I've always wondered uh, how did your Vortex Razor one uh, spotting scope look like? Uh, because um, the picture in your book i'm i'm not sure if that was it or was it your bigger one? Oh yeah yeah uh, in in the book there I'll, I'll i'll grab my smaller one for you and show you oh also just to let you all know this this is going to probably be an awesome discussion but also time check it's 132 i want uh, to make sure you're not late to wherever you have to go okay so um, i'm going to have to show you my spotting scope on a on a different on a different day <laughs> um but um the this is this is this is going to be a great tool for getting birds in your lap. Um, the another thing to consider is a um, a, a a tripod with slightly longer with longer legs, 
so that you'll be able to set it up on the ground and either stand there or sit on the ground. With this height, if you put it, say, on a picnic table, you can look through it really easily. Um, but um, it can be, be hard. So consider a, you can get, um, I, I, I often find tripods also in secondhand stores. So there's a lot of people giving out used tripods. Um, or you can also find a kind of a, a lightweight, inexpensive one. You want one that allows you to be able to, to sort of, uh, hold on a second. I'm going to add into, so you want one, if, if, if possible, where you can set it up so you can look through the scope like this and be stand there sketching like that. Or you can lower the whole scope down, sit in a chair and have it, you can set it up so that you're, sit, you're sitting comfortably and the scope is here and you can just look through it and draw, look through and draw. With, with the, 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 the mini pods, then what you have to do is you, like, you get down on the ground and you, you, you look through it. And that's, that's a little bit more difficult if the ground is damp. Especially if it has a straight one. Yes, yes that's right. Um, but, but this, uh, Ray Bonto, this tool is going to open up all sorts of doors. You know, you think your birds are close with your binoculars. You're going to be seeing like the, the level of detail that Walters had in around the, 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 the mouth of the guillemot, the, the gape of the guillemot. You'll be able to, to see all that sort of information and be like, oh, <laughs> it's going to be so much fun. Um, Arpan, this is a, a, a wonderful gift um, to extend um, Ray Bonto's uh, interest in, in ornithology and in, in nature journaling and sketching. Um, this is, is just the, 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 the perfect thing at the perfect time. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Uh, hey, it's really good to see all of you. Um, I'm afraid I'm going to have to bounce right now. Um, I'm going to, uh, Ave, is it all right if I um, make you the meeting host? Do, yeah. Are you able to, to, to stick and for more folks who want to share? Yeah, that'd be fine. All right. And I will be able to, um, uh, you're now, you're now the host. Um, and I will be able, I think, on the recording later to be able to see what other people shared. My friends, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, take care of this planet, and find an opportunity to go out and celebrate the beauty and wonder of what is around us. Um, I want to encourage everyone, um, when you are able, to um, get yourself vaccinated. The, um, the, the data is clear that this is, this is a, um, this is it is it is safe to do and the more of us that do that as a world society uh, we're going to be in a much better place to be able to 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 approach this this problem together oh and i got to put this on just before i go um <laughs> i see um oh uh, uh, uh Ivea, could you um uh, could you spotlight Ray Bonto? Absolutely. <laughs> so um, I just want to hold on a sec. So uh, Ray Bonto, you ready? Come back. So, there, you there we go. <laughs> I think we've, we've we've got a new friend. All right. <laughs> so yeah, that's right. So um, we're a group that that is is strongly in support of sock puppets. Um, ready? <clears throat> so oh yeah. Um, so uh, it's it's really good to see you. Thank you, Jack. All right. Y'all take care. Be safe. You too, Jack, and thank you. Bye, Jack. Take good care. Bye-bye, my friends. Did anybody else want to share um, their journals today? Um, th this is Heidi, okay. and I 
I, I have said um, this is so amazing because I have seen these in the Everglades. And that is where, um, that, that is where it's, uh, it, it's really scary. And um, uh, my husband was very close to one and it was uh, something that was just amazing. So this one was really happy for me. <laughs> so that's all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Isn't it interesting how, like how it changes us when we draw things that are frightening, how it might change how we view it or how we connect with it. Yeah. That might be kind of a fun challenge, not not like with any sort of due date, but just something to consider if anybody's ever looking for nature challenges. Find the thing that scares you and then try drawing it just to see what happens, just to see what happens for, you, for your emotions. I just want to say it's always good to be with you. And I hope everybody has a safe and happy rest of your day and find that thing that makes you feel calm and safe and or excited and safe. It doesn't have to be calm. But the thing that makes you happy, okay? So, were you about to talk with Cindy? Sorry. I thought I saw it. Um, Cindy, you unmuted yourself. Oh, no. Okay, sorry. <laughs> In that case, everybody take good care, and I'll see you all again soon. And Jack will too. Bye.